simulation with LED. So that's the scale in logistics that we operate at. I spoke about sustainability. Sustainability, especially the ESG balance sheet, uh, is very important for us. It's important that we leave behind a world and being in a space where we burn carbon, where we have planes, where we have trucks, it's really important for us to make the right moves, whether it is solar or whether it is e-aircraft. We have 12 e-aircraft of our own, also coincidentally called Alice. Um, we uh, have a, a deal with BP uh, for sustainable aviation fuel and uh, we have a plan to convert to electric vehicles for our fleet. So by doing all these initiatives, we hope to have zero net emissions by 2050. So it is a very lofty goal for us, but we are chasing it. And of course, you know, planting trees and ensuring that you have uh, solar electricity in offices, uh, getting rid of plastic, all of that is something that is very high on the cards for us. Um, so my day job is looking after customers and I thought I would share with you a little about uh, what I feel about customer service. Okay? Why is customer service important? Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions now. Right. So the first question is, this is all HBR backed data. 81% of companies with a strong reputation for delivering customer service outperform their competitors. What do you think? Is that true or false? True? Yes? Hands up for true? Okay. Remarkable majority. It's absolutely true. Okay. Um, the second question is silent. Is that true or false? True? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, a remarkable majority. Is there anyone in the room who thinks that this is this statistic is wrong? None. But all of you are wrong. Okay. For every customer who complains, there are 26 others who remain silent. Do you get that? People vote with their feet. They will leave a brand silently. So complaints, if you don't handle them, can be the silent fear, they can be the cancer in the organization. And that's why in our organization, even one complaint is taken very strongly and we don't say, oh, one of so many shipments, a million shipments a month, one customer's complaint about one specific issue. No. It is the root cause that can lead to many more complaints. And many complaints possibly we are not even aware of. A third question for you, 55% of customers who are dissatisfied with a product or service will not willingly do business with the same provider again. Is that true or false? True? So you wouldn't do business with a company who has provided bad service to you? Is that correct? Yes. Can I have a show of hands? Why do you think, why? so 55% is a low number, you would say it's a higher number? Is that what you are trying to tell me? Yes, comparatively it's a higher number if we see about the companies and having a 55% of single company. Okay. What is your name? Omkar Sharma. Omkar is absolutely right because the key is willingly. As Omkar said, if it's a monopoly, you have no option. It is what you said, Tina, there is no option. But if there is an option, 95, 91% of customers would not go back to that organization. Think of it. You have bad food in a restaurant. Would you willingly go back? No, right? Uh, a mobile phone, you know, I had terrible service on Vodafone in Mumbai. As soon as portability came in, what do you think I did? My number portability had locked me to the number that I use. Right? What did I do? Do you think I waited or I changed immediately? I changed, right? I changed to it. So the key is willingly. And remember the last two statistics. Because as today, products are replicated. Okay? Uh, technology can be bought. In this day and age, it is customer experience that makes the difference. Is that right? You use your Apple 
phone to make a call. But the experience on the other phone of navigating, of using the phone itself is what commands a higher price for you. So, as Jack Welch said, if you don't have a competitive edge, don't compete. And uh, with all the platforms that are coming up, I was speaking to another gentleman who is a speaker from CMS. He was saying that with the OMBC platforms, D2C customers will lose their edge because they will be visible. So, you know, you know if an Amazon product is available from a Flipkart or a Mintra. What will differentiate the company is only service, is only the experience that the customers get. CX will become the differentiator. And at DHL Express, we really believe strongly in this. And that's the secret sauce of the organization. So, uh, what is the focus at DHL? I'm going to quote from uh, four people. And I'm going to tell you A for attention. Okay? See, you have noticed best. There are so many things that you will not notice. Unless you are alert, unless you spot a business opportunity. When the customer is talking to you, there is a business opportunity in it. Because you can sell him insurance, you can sell him a time definite, a guaranteed service, and you can make money for the company. Uh, in the team that we have in customer service, we've always been focused on taking calls and resolving emails and complaints and escalations. But about uh, 12 years ago, we spotted a business opportunity and we said that customer service is a cost center. Why don't we look at customer service becoming a profit center and selling value-added services to customers at an extra cost and bringing in profits for the company, add to the top line of the company. So, I'm happy to say that at DHL Express, we have a bouquet of products and we don't just sell it to customers, we provide solutions. So you're shipping a painting. Wouldn't you have peace of mind if I give you an insurance product? Right? You are bidding for a tender in another country worth millions. Wouldn't you be satisfied if an individual executive tracks your shipment and delivers it by a guaranteed time? Make sure that the flight it takes, make sure that it's handed over correctly. So through these booking of products, I'm happy to say that of all the bookings we get in our call center, over 50% of them, we sell value-added solutions, okay? And you know what that has done after, um, actually we started, this is 2022, we started the journey about 2008 or so, seven or eight. So in the last 15 years, we have transformed customer service into a profit center. All the calls that we get, all the salaries that we pay out, you put that on one side, you take the revenue that we get, we are almost a profit center. We possibly uh, become a profit center by the end of the year. So that's been an amazing journey for us. So attention. We did that because every call that comes into us, we have keywords. Like you picked up a own car on the word willingly. You wouldn't willingly go back to the same service provider. Our agents are taught to look for keywords, precious, important, urgent, priority, and we pitch the right solutions. Uh, so, as Walt Disney says, every frame counts. And remember that in life also. Every single action, small or big, counts. On Oprah Winfrey, be positive. Passion is actually positive energy in action. That's what passion is. And at DHL Express, we live this passion through the purpose. Uh, we have actually six attributes for our appraisal measurements. One of them is staying positive in the face of uncertainty and challenges. So every leader, every executive actually, those six attributes are measured against the actions that you do every day at the workplace. So that's about being positive. The third is customer centric. And here I would like to tell you about what we say in DHL is be insanely customer centric. That is enshrined in our quality policy. Imagine the quality policy of the organization where it says that be insanely customer centric and feel sick to the
the stomach if a customer comes to you with a problem. So that's what we drive. That's the message we drive at every level in the organization and that is why customer service is our secret sauce. Last is D. Always develop and uh, especially for all of you in the room who are attending your best summit. Uh, if you stop growing, it's the end. Okay? It's death. Even a tree, everything around us grows. If you stop growing, you just remember that you, you're dead. You're as good as dead. Uh, every aspect, your soft skills, the way you speak, your hard skills, because as I said, the world is changing. You, it's more important than ever to upskill. If you don't upskill, you will be redundant and you will be dead in the marketplace. So this is a very important message that you must write in bold everywhere and continuously work on this one skill. Moving on from this, I would like to share something with you. Uh, this is my daily's diary from those of you who may know about RT Narayan. And I thought I would take this opportunity to share some of my personal insights uh, in my years of working and living life. Okay? So the first is about communication. And it is the power of words. Okay? Uh, they say that tone is very important, body language is very important. And of course, words are very important. Why words? Because now, a lot of the time, the customer doesn't hear your voice. The customer can't see you. It's only virtually when you are present. And it's only words that you have to touch the customer or touch anyone in a relationship, in every aspect of your life. That's all we have, words, okay? Um, so all of you, I would like you to just take a minute and close your eyes. Do this for me. Don't fall off to sleep. You won't. Okay? Close your eyes and imagine what do we all like to eat. Imagine ice cream. Okay? Bhuvan uh, Vishwar is a, it's hot. It's a very hot day. And you're very, very hungry and thirsty and your throat is parched. Now think of an ice cream cone in front of you. It's a vanilla ice cream cone with choco chips in it. And it's cold. And it's lovely. You take a bite and the ice cream feels so lovely inside your mouth. It feels so cool and it's so refreshing and so rejuvenating. On a hot summer day, you're having an ice cream. Now open your eyes. If you really felt that, you will find that you have saliva inside your mouth. Okay? That's the power of words. So remember this. When you use a negative word, when you say something that jars, you damage relationships. And the words that you speak, they stay back with the people that they touched. Okay? So you must be very, very careful of how you speak. Always speak neutrally, especially in a negative situation. We tell our supervisors, that good supervisors actually inspire and motivate people, right? But what do bad supervisors do? They actually create so much stress and there is a study which backs it up that people who work with stressful bosses have higher levels of blood pressure, have coronary artery disease. It's an actual study, okay? So this is what you can create in the workplace. And you, when you become leaders, if you are a boss who touches the life and inspires people, then imagine the service that they will deliver from you, for you. At DHL Express, for example, I don't take a single call, okay? But today the call center is running. Today our teams are doing tracing. 
some 20,000 transactions will happen and I wouldn't be taking a single one of them. So what is my only job? My only job is to inspire them to deliver it. And how can I do it? Through words. Right? So remember this. Remember this moment here at your summit. And remember never to use a negative word. If you use a negative word, you not only touch somebody else negatively, but you actually touch yourself negatively. The impact is felt in your psyche, in your management. Did that feel for you? Is this something that you resonate with? Yes? Can I see a show of hands, please? The second point from my witness diary is being a CEO. Okay. Do all of you want to be a CEO? Yes? Do most of you want to be a CEO? Can you raise your hands? Almost everyone. Okay. But my definition of CEO is such that all of you will want to be one. All of you would be a chief energy officer. And if you are a chief energy officer, you will also be a successful human being. The four sources of energy are physical, mental, spiritual and emotional. I will speak about two of those sources, physical and mental. Uh, the really important energy sources that we draw on every day in our corporate lives. And if you are in a zone of negative energy, okay, look at this quadrant. You will get into survival mode, you will burn out, you will have futile thinking, you will be stressed yourself and you will be a leader who creates stress. However, if you are in the zone of positive energy, there are only two places you will be in. One is the zone of being in performance management mode, which is, you know, when you do something which you really like, you are playing tennis. Who play tennis here? I saw a quote. Yeah, okay. When you really play tennis, do you think of anything else? No, right? And that is why you are successful because you are so mindful, you are playing tennis so mindfully that you are in what we call the flow, right? That is a zone of high positive energy. There is also a zone of lower positive energy where you are not in tennis playing mode but you are sitting and dreaming, you are envisioning the future. And you are being in either refresh mode or you are being in blue sky thinking. Uh, you tell me that you know so much is wrong with the world, there is a war, uh, the world is choking in plastic, uh, pollution, climate crisis around the world, global warming. But yet, when you think of those problems, if you stay in the positive energy zone, you will find the blue sky opening up above you and you will find thoughts, you will find opportunities and you will find insights to benefit the world so that we can fight all these challenges together. So this is my second point from my dateless diary is always be in a zone of positive energy. And if you are to be a successful human being, you will be a CEO. Who will you be? A chief? Chief energy officer. Okay, so all of us, let us commit to be chief energy officers every day of our lives, okay? Now I'll indulge me. Quickly count the number of F's in this sentence. Okay. How many F's were there? Sorry? One F. Five X. Priya says five. Six. Who says six? How many hands for six? Okay. So only four people had six. Everybody else had five. Including Priya. Um, you missed. Now look at it. Count again. Six. a customer complaint, a moment of dissatisfaction by an employee, right? And how can you transform yourself? This is the magic of mindful leadership. And that is my topic. But 
the magic of mindfulness is not restricted to leadership alone. Why do you, uh, the tennis player in the second last row, what is your name please? Antariksh. Antariksh, when you play tennis, are you happy? Yes. You're happy. Why are you happy? Because it interests you, it's my passion. It's, it interests you, it's in the passion, it's your passion. And you know why it makes you happy? Because you live in the present. Is there any other moment you're living in which is not in the present, Antariksh? Do you live in the past or in the future? Yeah, when you contemplate about uh, future, or past, when you think about mistakes. So when you think of your mistakes or when you think of the future, you are not actually living it, you're imagining it. Because if you lived in the future, you would stop breathing, right? And if you lived in the past, then you would not be breathing in the present. So physically and biologically, thank you, Antariksh. The only space that we inhabit is where? Is in the moment, is in the now. Are you agreeing with me? Yes. yes? And if you think of the past too excessively, then you will get into the zone of negative energy. If you think of the past, think of it with great positive hope for the future. It's the only way to be. Okay? If you think we are doomed, then you should just stop living. Okay. Hope is something that will turn the world around. You will only be able to realize it if you live fully in the present. Okay. There is a story about this Zen master. And the Zen master was asked by, he was extremely intelligent. He was very wise. And the Zen master was asked, what is the one skill that you would impart to the world? What is the one wisdom? He said, attention. The students went away and came back and said, Oh, attention seems so simple. So he said, Do something. You live with full attention, mindfulness just for one day. And when you live for that one day, come back to me. Okay? The students couldn't do it and they didn't go back to him for years. You try for one day. Live mindfully. Everything that you do, connecting with a friend, not looking at your mobile, not connecting with anything that's outside of the present moment and see how successful you are. It's not easy to do it. But I told you about Dr. Rappel and Dr. Rappel visited India last month and what we saw was that he was fully mindful. If you're fully mindful, you will beat almost everybody else in the room. Let's say you have average intelligence. But somebody comes to a meeting with 30% of their brain and you come with 90% of their brain. Hands down, you will win. Uh, I was a very uh, distracted person earlier. Through mindfulness, I have transformed myself in the last five years. And I find that when I get into a business meeting, I am so sharp and smart. Okay? And I make points because everybody else is looking at their mobile phones or they're thinking of something else. And when I make a point, they say, oh, wow, that's a great insight. That's a eureka moment. How do I do this? By being fully mindful. I don't have my mobile phone. I'm not looking at my notes. Right? I am with you in this moment. And that's what makes it so powerful. Remember this. Okay? Commit to mindfulness. If it's the one thing that you take from my presentation for your life, I will be happy. Sorry. So there are many quotes on mindfulness. I just picked two for you. Mindfulness. Can it be a superpower? How many of you agree? If you make mindfulness your superpower, you will see that everything, every performance that you do will be imbued with that power. You will be stellar. And I'm telling you, all the leaders in the world, they are fully mindful. Look at the, uh, look at the prime ministers who are successful. Look at the presidents who are successful. Look at Barack Obama. How mindful he is. Abraham Lincoln, all the stories in management will tell you that successful leaders are fully living in the moment. And what really is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the awareness that arises by paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. You know why? This is uh, the, somebody who is who's taken our philosophy to the West, John Kabat-Zinn. You can look him up. He's a master of mindfulness. Why is the non-judgmental important? Anyone care to have a go? Yes, please. True. And a bias is 
is negative. Thank you very much. What is your name? Divya. Divya, if you are biased, you are in a space of negativity, correct? In some way. And it will shroud your clear thinkingness. Okay? So mindfulness is about, thank you very much, Divya. It's about being positive. It's about living in the present moment, which is the only moment that exists. Okay? How can you be mindful? Okay? You can be mindful at any point in time. Uh, of course, what meditation does is, a practice of meditation, if you can introduce it, it in your life at a young age, just as you play, you play tennis or you go for a walk or you run, that builds your, it will build your powers of concentration, it will build happiness. Uh, there is a statistic on the internet which says that human beings have the attention span of 8 seconds. Okay? Even a goldfish in a bowl has an attention span of 9 seconds. How tragic is that? We are not even as attentive as a goldfish in a bowl. Okay? And you will find that you, if, you are, if you meditate, you will strengthen that mindfulness muscle. If you don't have time to be meditative, tie it to an activity you are doing. For example, while you are eating. Try it. Feel the food in your mouth. Feel the texture. Taste the food. Eat absolutely quietly and you will see what it does to your enjoyment of the food and on your mood. You just see the impact. So, uh, for example, uh, there is a practice in Japan called Cha no Yu, which is having cha, which is having tea mindfully. So, if, if you love tea or coffee, you can do that mindfully. Though if you try to have beer mindfully and you have a lot of it, you will be mindless. Okay? So, it... Uh, doesn't work for anything which will uh, take away your mind. So you can be mindful at every moment. So staying in the present is important. Okay. What does purpose have to do with it? Because purpose is the future, right? And why is that important? We come back to Alice from in her wonderland, and Alice is speaking to the Cheshire cat. And Alice tells the Cheshire cat, so which road do I take? The Cheshire cat tells Alice, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. Do you want to get out of this room without a direction? Do you want to walk mindlessly? Do you want to walk around in circles? If you don't have a direction, no, the human body is more weighted on the left hand side. Your heart is there. Um, so what will happen is, you will walk around in circles. You will walk around in anti-clockwise circles. So you must have a direction. And this is a note from my English diary, find your purpose. For those of you who don't know it yet, you will have to work on it, you will have to be very mindful and alert, and you will have to find something that fires your passion, like for example, tennis is a passion, and that can give you a living in the world and that can make a difference to the world. But if you're alert and mindful, you will find your passion. Okay? So, the reason why finding your passion is very important and finding your purpose is because it's the only road to success. Okay? Uh, I come back to the theme of this presentation which is transcending boundaries. How will you transcend boundaries if you don't believe in yourself? Is this right when I say that you are only limited by your beliefs? Yes, your beliefs limit you. Correct or not? Yes? So when you find your purpose, when you want to know what you can do, who knows, inside this room there could be a Steve Jobs. If you believe you can be one, you will be one. But if you say, I don't believe I can be Steve Jobs, you never, never make it. Okay. Can I interest you to, uh, do you want to find your purpose for a moment? I conduct meditation classes. Do you want to do a short session where I ask you to close your eyes and you find your purpose? Would you like that? How many people would like that? Show of hands. Okay, seems to be a majority in the room. So sit back. Don't limit yourself, okay? When you think of your purpose and what you want to achieve in life. Keep everything you have in 
your hand, sit very comfortably with your back resting on the chair, your feet on the ground, not crossed, not crossed ankles, comfortably on the ground. Your hands on your thighs or your hands in your lap, but just be comfortable. Close your eyes and breathe in and out very gently. In and out. You can feel the breath coming in through your nose. Going down to your lungs. You can feel the breath flowing through your body. You're very relaxed. This moment is just for you. The moment is now. Relax fully into the moment. Now think of a very, very happy place that you have visited. A very nice place in the lap of nature, with trees. That could be the sea in the distance, or a river, or a mountain. But you are in the lap of nature. The sky is blue. The weather is just perfect and it's a beautiful moment. Feel the relaxation coming down from the top of your head, right to your feet. You are sitting in a chair watching this beautiful view in front of you. There are green trees. There is a wind blowing. It touches your face. You can hear the birds falling out as they fly in the sky above. You can hear the wind through the trees. And the relaxation floats down from the top of your head, down to your shoulders, your arms, down your body. Your shoulders and your back, which feel tired, now feel refreshed and relaxed. Your solar plexus, your stomach, feel totally relaxed as you enjoy this moment by the seaside or river or by the mountain in your very favorite place. The relaxation flows down your thighs, down your legs. And you feel so relaxed and happy. You have achieved a lot and you're very proud that after all the hard work you are in the moment of peace and relaxation and you have achieved so much. You know who you are, you know who your purpose is, you know where you want to go. Take a moment and see yourself and know who this person is and what he or she has achieved. This is your achievement. You have found your purpose and you are working on it.
you are very successful, but you want to grow even further. You want to touch the sky. You find in your hand a seed. This is the seed of a coconut tree. You have achieved much, but you want to plant this seed in the ground and have this coconut tree that is your achievements reach and scale the heights of everything in the surroundings. You want the coconut tree to touch the sky. Drop the seed into the ground. You know that the wind and rain and nature will nourish and nurture this tree and it will grow into a very, very tall coconut tree with fruits, with perfect leaves towering over the landscape and standing out. This is who you are. Cement your purpose. Tell yourself that I can do this. I will not be limited by my own beliefs. I will touch the sky. I have found my purpose and I will achieve the heights that it is possible for me to achieve. Today is the day which is the first day of the rest of my life. And I know that I have found my purpose, I have found my road, and I can achieve this purpose. Take a moment and feel the pride and the joy inside you, with your families, with your loved ones, In your own time, make a statement for yourself. I want to be dash and then change the statement to say I am dash. I am the best entrepreneur in the world. I am the best CEO in the world. I am the best leader in the field of IT or consulting or wherever it is you want to go. I am the best and I am proud of my achievements. I will remember this moment because this is the moment where I have understood my purpose and the road to achieve it. Make that statement for yourself. I am Dash in my chosen field of Dash. I have achieved the height of success. Make your statement in your own time. Open your eyes. Do you feel the magic of mindfulness?
you feel it can be your superpower? Okay, stay committed to your purpose. Write your statement down. If you don't have it, try it again. Go back to your special place. Think of a coconut tree and how high you want to grow and flower over the landscape. You will always find it. Do this one meditation. There are many available on the internet for everything in life. Okay? Um, I'll share my personal story before I end. So that's my family, uh, my husband, my daughter and I. And uh, I speak of the magic of mindfulness. I want to tell you how it has transformed my life. So before the pandemic, I was still practicing meditation. But during the pandemic, in the last two years, I got this opportunity with work from home to do it in a sustained manner. I turned 50 um, actually during the pandemic, just around the time of the pandemic. And uh, I had lifestyle diseases. I had to have a thyroid medication and a blood pressure medication. But when I started started practicing meditation and mindfulness, I had this unexpected gain. Of course, I was, you know, far less stressed. I was happier with the people around me. But remarkably, my thyroid and my blood pressure problems went away. The doctor was shocked. He was surprised. He said, how do you do this? I said, I don't know. I just meditate. brought me so much joy and if I stayed true to my limiting belief, oh, I'm not a dog person. I would have missed something truly remarkable in my life, okay? This dog is a, a constant companion, a very gentle creature and a part of my family. So, just a small example that if you limit yourself, if you have limiting beliefs, you will limit your own joy. And I'm connecting to your theme of transcending boundaries. Who sets the boundaries for you? It is you who sets them. When I got married, I'll be completing 30 years of marriage next year. When I got married, I had two very powerful women in my life, my mother and mother-in-law. They both said, never enter the kitchen, okay? Just ensure that you give all your energies to your work and to your family, your husband, us. So, um, I can't cook, I can't make an omelette, okay? I just can't cook. And when I say I can't cook, it's not because of my capability, because I choose not to cook. I do not like it. Of course, there are many women like our CFO, she loves to cook. So for her, it is her passion. I write poetry, I read, but she loves to cook for her family. So if it's something that you love, by all means, okay? But do not impose any mandates or restrictions on yourself. Being free, you will be in a prison. Being free is the most important three. Being free is a fundamental human right enshrined in all the constitutions of the world. If you set limits, you are not freeing yourself. And having biases is again a limiting belief. Okay? Everywhere I speak, I am asked the CEO of the company, his name is Subramanian. He said that one thing that strikes me is, that you never bring your gender, you never think like a woman, okay? Of course, I bring in an element which is uh, being more emotional and being more nurturing. Just by virtue, I think of being more creative, okay? Maybe it's my gender, maybe it's just me. But I don't think like a woman, okay? I don't think I am a woman. I should say I don't think I'm a woman. So I never set any limits for myself. I never thought there is a glass ceiling. So I never thought that there is a need to shatter it. Okay? I worked, I did the best I could at the workplace 
and I gave priority to my family. But at the same time, I ensured that I live my passion. I want to be the best ever poet to remember my name because I'm, to, I'm going to win a lot of awards. Okay? So I'm very passionate about poetry. And that's why I, you know, I started my family with Rushali, who's been looking after me very well. Please clap for Rushali. Thank you, Rushali. So, you try to ask me a question at breakfast about family and children. And uh, I was working very hard, but I always wanted a child. So, you see, I'm 30 years old, but, but my daughter is barely 15. I, I mean, I'm 30 years into my marriage. Uh, I turned 50 plus, but my daughter is barely 15. Okay? How is that possible? Because I chose to adopt. Okay? And uh, it was a wonderful decision. So, there is no biological clock for adoption. It's just the way that you choose. Okay? Never say, I can't do this. I don't choose to do this. The moment you catch yourself having a limited belief, stop. Just stop and say, I am limiting myself. Every time you have a limited belief, you are building a chain around yourself. Okay? So never do that. The world can be yours. Remember that moment that you were there when you are the tallest coconut tree towering over a landscape. And that's who you are, that's who you're meant to be. Okay? So that's all I have to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. We hope you are able to take all the learnings of today's session and implement them to improve our leadership skills. Now I would like to open the floor for questions. Um, a little bit about another woman leader. Uh, with me is uh, Sumita. Uh, Sumita joined DHL. She uh, looks after training for customer service. Training is a very, very important aspect when we are trying to drive quality. Remember, we said build skills and culture. That is the mantra for our customer service team and Sumita does that very admirably. And Sumita has been chosen for a global project. She is working with teams across the world, Ireland, uh, Germany, um, Singapore. So very prestigious global project for her. And Sumita has accompanied me and uh, she and I have worked on this presentation together. So thank you very much Sumita for being here. <laughs> she is a woman leader also. She is a homemaker and uh, her husband is a restaurateur and she has a lovely child. So to all the women in the room, never give up on your career. Never. Ever. Okay? Now the companies are six months of maternity. I spoke about the biological clock. Okay? And don't think, don't bring your gender into the workplace. Never. I'm having a mood. I mean, what the hell is a mood swing? Okay? If you're having a mood swing, you're not supposed to be in the corporate life. You have to handle yourself. What quote did you use of Peter Drucker when you started? That managing yourself is the most important thing. If you can't manage your mood swing, you can't manage anything. Okay? So remember that and remember your energies. Physically and mentally, you must be at peak performance mode. If you are gasping for oxygen, okay? If you are gasping for oxygen, you need to fit an oxygen mask on yourself before you can do anything around you. Correct? If the plane is crashing, you don't put the oxygen mask on your child. You first put it on yourself. However much you love somebody, first you look after yourself. Me time. Me is very important. And that's why I don't choose to cook. I don't. I hate cooking. So I've decided I'll never cook. And I love it. Okay? So, thank you. Any questions? I'd love questions. Um, I have taken a lot of courses in meditation, in mindfulness. So anything that you would like to ask, anything about the industry, anything about working, uh, please do tell me. Question, which is a word play. 
whether success comes from mindfulness or whether mindfulness comes from success. See, uh, thank you. It's a chicken and egg situation. I think if you're mindful, you will be successful. Okay? No two ways about it. But honestly, I, I started the other way around uh, by uh, various dynamics around me, about me. I think I was successful first. And then I realized that there are many things I'm doing wrong. I'm getting stressed, I'm stressing other people, I'm too restless, I'm not so focused. I am not focusing on my physical health and my mental health. To me, it came afterwards. Okay? But for all of you in the room, you're so young, you're beginning your... It's the first day of the rest of your life. Okay? When I look back on my life, I have lived more than half my life. You barely lived your life. So for you, you must take on the magic of mindfulness at a young age. If you do it, you will be unstoppable, Saloni. So for you, I will say, mindfulness will bring success. It is that story, there is an Amir Khan movie, right? Uh, where uh, chase excellence and success will follow. Which is the movie? Three idiots. Thank you. So it is like that. If you are mindful, no, I am telling you. My boss is very sharp and very smart. He's far smarter than I am. But when he comes to the table, and if he's not mindful, I will beat him any day. Atarish, if you're fully mindful, if you're 100%, you can beat Roger Federer if he's distracted. And I'm telling you, it's true, it's possible. Okay? So you will win if you're mindful, because most people are not being mindful. It is a secret. Go to a restaurant. How are people around the table? Everyone is looking at the mobile phone. Every time you look at the mobile phone, remember, you are not even a goldfish in the bowl. You are worse. A goldfish at least looks out for 9 seconds, 10 seconds. And you see, you are not able to grasp things. So Saloni, when I started being mindful, I started making more connections. No one connected the fact that you have the best summit in the world at this moment. You could have done the branding, BEST 2022. It would have been so powerful. And you call yourself BES. Please come to BES. Come to best at XIMB. Magic of mindful leadership, yes or no? Are you the best? Yes. Do you believe? Yes. Every one of you, tall coconut trees charring over the landscape, do you believe you're the best? Yes. Yes? And this batch, and the next batch, okay? This batch who will graduate and the next batch who are going to graduate. Imagine if you have powerful CEOs, powerful musicians, powerful film directors, and people will say, what happened to this batch? Why are they so successful? And you will say, it is because I realized that being mindful, because I and my friends realized that being mindful is the secret to success. Does it answer your question, Saloni? Yes. So what comes first, success or mindfulness? Mindfulness. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please, Antarish. I want to ask you a question. Have you read this book called The Power of Habit? Have you read this book? It is a book by Charles Duhigg. It is a seminal book. And uh, do you agree that we are a uh, sum total of all our habits, the good and the bad? Yes? Uh, you wake up late, you'll forever wake up late, you'll never be in the 5 a.m. club, you'll never have discipline. In that book, there is something which is that if you can make one change, and then it shall come to you, okay? Just want to share this. Is that if you make one change in your life, like for example, if you are able to quit smoking, okay, I quit smoking through medication. Uh, possibly that was a health benefit that I achieved. Uh, but if you are able to make a change, which is a huge change that shows your willpower, if you are able to control something, like for example, you say that I am going to exercise for half an hour every day, and you do it almost every day. You say that I am going to quit smoking, and you quit smoking. Anything that changes your willpower, one consistent action will is called a keystone habit. It's written in the book by Charles Duhigg. If you can make a change in habit, a keystone.
don't have your change, you will see the impact of it in every part of your life. Because self-control, will, discipline, all kinds comes from strengthening your mental muscle. It comes through mindfulness. Okay. You will ask me how I can for those of you who are not allowed to smoke on campus. I know that. But I don't believe that that is the reality. <laughs> um, if you want to give up smoking, first it has to begin with the intention. You have to want something. If you don't want to do it, then it's okay. I mean, uh, if you want to keep it for a while and it's a habit that serves you, keep it. But if you really want to keep it, if you want to really throw that habit away, then I replaced the moments of smoking with moments of meditation. Every time I wanted to smoke, I meditated. Even if it was for 10 minutes. And when I opened my eyes, I didn't want to smoke anymore. Because what Charles Tudyk says is, a habit is a loop. There is a cue, and that cue will make you do that terrible habit, and it reinforces, and it will happen forever. Okay? Forever you will see a friend who smokes, you will see a cigarette package, you will have a glass of beer, and you will say, I want to smoke. Only by changing, you, the cue will never change. The cue is not in your control, it will happen all around you. Only by changing the routine can you change it. So instead of smoking, meditate then, is what I did. And I realized when I read Charles Turing's book, then I, when I started meditating, when I started being mindful, I actually developed a keystone habit and that has seeped into all aspects of my life. Believe me, the poetry that I write is better because I'm more mindful. As a leader, Sumita has been, she's very close to me, she's my right hand, she's seen me through the years. She can tell you possibly, as she tells me sometimes, is that I'm the best version of myself. In all the years that I have lived, 50 plus years, I'm the best version of myself now through mindfulness. If I knew this magic when I was graduating out of Narsi Moji school in the year 1993, I would be more than what I am. Okay, So take this back, the magic of mindfulness. Antariksh, you had a question for me, please. Well, uh, thank you for bringing this topic up on uh, the power of habits. Yes. Uh, I have read Atomic Habits and Cooked by Neil Ayal. Yes, yes. And uh, these serve as the guiding tool for the short term goals you should have. Correct. Uh, but to find the long term goal, like uh, does Ikigai uh, exist or is it a uh, fancy term? Okay, Ikigai is a good question. Um, so, Atomic Habits are, thank you very much for that. I found a very nice thing in Atomic Habits uh, is that it's a two minute rule. When I'm procrastinating, no? And procrastination will hit you everywhere. It says that just do that thing for two minutes. Okay? So if I say that, for example, I have to work on a project and I'm like really bored, I'll say, okay, let me just work on it for 10 minutes. Okay? Or five minutes. And as soon as I do it, no? The inertia of motion will take you through. So whenever you're procrastinating, that two minute thing is there in the Atomic Habits book, right? Yes. Um, and Ikigai, another very powerful book which changed my life. I love that Venn diagram in Ikigai, which says which one is about your passion, one is about something that will um, give you uh, a living, you know, where you can make money, and the third is something that will make a difference to the world. Okay. The point of intersection, section A, B, C, when it comes across that little area in the center, if you can find something which is your passion, which is something which will help you on your salary, and which will make a difference to the world, it is your Ikigai. And Ikigai exists. It exists because you meditated with me, you saw yourself as a towering tree, and you know you made a difference to the world. And Ikigai is, DHL is the fine, is a really fine company. We were a great place to work number one. In India, two years ago, we slipped a little, but we will get back there. In Asia Pacific, we are a great place to work number one. In the world, we are a great place to work always in the top five. So it's a very fine organization, and the success comes because we drive Ikigai. We ensure that we reward our people well, we ensure that we live the purpose, and we ensure that we are making a difference to the world. So your purpose must tick these three boxes which the Ikigai book speaks about. It must uh, make you truly happy, it must bring you money, and you must have a sense that you're making a difference to the world. What's the point of living like a, you know, uh, just solely? 
you are not an idealist. You touch so many lives, so you should be outstanding. Thank you, Antrish. Who's raising the hand? I'm happy to be here. I have a flight ready late. Uh, hello, ma'am. Ma'am, as you talked about mindfulness, but sometimes the, uh, the present situations become so unclear uh, that it becomes very difficult to be mindful about the present, present situation and we start looking forward to the future or maybe uh, the past which was maybe better than the present situation. So in that case, how to be mindful? Like I know that we have to be positive and all, but what is that trick that helps you to bear difficult situations in the present? Okay, so uh, let's talk about the past. You will find that a situation is stressful only because you know what causes stress when you are not in control. Just remember this. When I feel I'm not in control, I feel stressed. I'm running to catch a flight, but let me leave. I'm not in control of the time, so I'm stressed. I don't know enough and I feel scared. How do I... Uh, uh, appear for the exam, okay? So stress actually exists because of your uh, future projection that I'm going to do badly or I'm missing or because of your past experience, okay? But having said that, you said that you want to live in the past because it was a beautiful moment, right? So use the past to leverage, to leapfrog into the future, okay? So I don't know if uh, you saw that. Uh, you said your name was? Sorry? Divya, right? Divya? Divya, if you saw, I told you, go to a place which you have visited before. It's a happy place. As soon as you do that, you know, your happy hormones kick in and you're in a zone where you can go into the future with that happy memory. So use your past to leverage. Okay? And if you are scared of the future, you remember, you are scared of the future only because you don't have control over it. Charles Darwin wrote and it has never been true as of this moment in the world when everything has changed. If you adapt, you will always survive, agree or not. Yes? So when the going gets tough, when you think that, you know, I'm very stressed by the future, I don't know what to do, build on your past experience, get your happy thoughts, let go of all the baggage, okay? 
build on your happy thoughts. This is what has succeeded for me, but it won't succeed for me in the future. The reason why I'm stressed is because I know there is uncertainty. So what do you have to do? How will you survive? How will you be the fittest? You will? What will you do? How will you be the fittest? You will adapt. You will adapt. Okay? Continuously be flexible. Growth comes from being flexible and growth comes from developing and learning all the time. Okay? Thank you. I would like to thank you, ma'am, for sharing your precious insights. I'm sure all of us have benefited from it immensely and will stay with us as we further unravel and understand the importance of mindful leadership. I would also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, our special partner, G Group, and our refreshment partner, Monji. I would lastly like to thank the audience for their enthusiastic participation and engagement. Ma'am, I would request to please accept from us a token of our gratitude. Batch. I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, I believe it was a pretty interactive session and I'm also uh, was interacting a lot and you guys also kept the enthusiasm high. So thank you so much for that. Uh, just a couple of pointers. Keep in mind when as long as the leader is here, we should be professionals and maintain integrity. Nobody is going to stop you uh, from talking or kicking pictures. I understand it's a part of the process but be professional, right? A uh, request to the photographers from Luminatics and Excellence over here. No informal or all of these fake candidates to go on as long as the speaker is present here. Is that clear team? You are doing great work throughout three days. All of you have been covering and supporting us, but these are just very basic hygiene checks we can ensure, right? So I think that's all from our end. Thank you so much, guys.